Hey everybody, this is James Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and I want to welcome you guys back to another video. And in this one, we're going to take a look at debugging JavaScript in both the Chrome Developer Tools and in Visual Studio Code, something I'm really excited about. So let's go ahead and dive on in. All right, so the application that I'm going to walk through debugging here is Quick Chat, which is the, the end result from a series that I had a few videos back, which was called Design and Build a Chat Application with Socket.io. And uh, the, the link for this is below. You can clone the code from GitHub and bring it down to your computer, run it, and do exactly what I'm doing if you want to. Otherwise, you can use any application that you want and use that to work with. Uh, and, and these debugging concepts are gonna apply regardless of what project you're working on. So uh, what's going on now is I've got a little little bug here that uh, when I log in and I type James, uh, when I actually do log in, it gives me undefined join the chat. So something's going wrong and I don't really know what. So I'm looking at this login button uh, event handler and I don't really know exactly what's going on. So I know the username input is the, let's come back here, the input that the user types into. So maybe I would wanna take a look at uh, username input and I might print this out with a console log and this is this is the very easiest earliest rudimentary way of debugging is console log and if you're anything like me you use it all the time uh, and probably a little too much and you probably want to start taking advantage of the actual debugging techniques that I'm going to show you here uh, as you get a little more sophisticated and I think that's one of the differences uh, you know, as you become a better developer and a better web developer, as you really start to take advantage of all the tools that are already out there. It's not just about writing the code, it's about the ecosystem that you live in when you develop. And this is this is one of those big things is doing debugging. So if I, if I go ahead and trigger this and, and do a uh, James here in chat, and I can see the input, uh, the input DOM object gets uh, printed, it looks okay. Now I can check the value and I reload here and write it again and it's printing out the value so it looks right and I'm starting to wonder you know I don't really know what's going on I don't know why uh, and maybe I kind of come down here and notice oh I've got text instead of value so there's a small little bug here that you know I, I can kind of play around with by uh, by printing out something with a console log but it's not the best way to do this and I want to show you uh, what is so in addition to doing this console log I'm gonna type in a statement here called uh, debugger and what this is going to do, we'll see in a second, it's gonna activate the debugger within Google Chrome and it's gonna pop open the, the debugging tools that we can work with to help, help us figure out what the situation is that's going on. So let's save this. Let's go ahead and refresh this application. And just so you guys know, this application, it's a Node app that's serving uh, the JavaScript file that I'm looking at here. And I, it's auto reloading uh, because I've started it with NodeMon. So NodeMon will auto reload my node server anytime I save one of the files, which is why you see some stuff printed out down here. So let's go ahead and do this again. Let's log in with James and press enter. And basically what's happened, this is probably, if you've never seen this before, this might be a lot of information. Basically what this debugger statement does here is it tells Google, Google Chrome to pause your application, pause the execution of, execution of your application until you see fit to go forward. So everything, it's in the, the exact state that you want it to be in or that you that you want to inspect, and now your job is to just go in and inspect. So the first thing you'll notice is it, it kind of grayed out the application a little bit. It popped up with the paused and debugger with a play button here and then another one next to it. Uh, so this is uh, continue, I think it's a resume, and then a step over next function call, which we'll talk about in a second. And then on the right, you'll see the sources tab is now open. So if you've used uh, the developer tools before, you've probably seen elements and network and console, maybe for performance, and you may not have looked at the sources tab. And this is where we can, uh, first of all, in this top right corner, this is the code that, that Google Chrome is actually loading. So this is the code that's actually running as this website in Google Chrome. So you can come in and you can see, uh, you can see this code actually maps up to what we have in our app.js over here. And you can see it's, it's blue right on this debugger line. That's because that's the breakpoint that uh, Google Chrome understood where to pause the execu execution of our application. And we'll talk more about breakpoints, but breakpoints are basically just a way to tell Chrome or tell your IDE or tell your environment to stop your application or to pause it so that you can do some inspection. So we've got it paused here, 
And uh, this is the code in the top right. Uh, we'll look at a few things in the bottom left as we move on. Uh, but I want to look at the scope in the bottom right. And this is where you can start to inspect the things that are going on in your application. And you'll see first we've got the local scope. So this is a scope that's local to this callback. It's an ES6 fat error function. We've got the E, the mouse event. This is a local parameter to this function, right? This is a local parameter to this function, this mouse event. And you can actually go in and you can look and inspect what E is. So typically you, you could console log this, uh, but it's not really that convenient because as you need more things you need to look at or you kind of forget to do a console log, it's hard to go back and find them. This way you can find basically anything that you want to look at. So there are those things. Then we have a global section. This is just everything you've got on the window object, which has tons of stuff in it. And lastly, we've got our script. So these are things that are coming from this app.js. And username input is one of them. So if I open that up, that's the, uh, the DOM element. And I scroll down and maybe I'm trying to see what text is, right? Because I think it's text or I've typed text. And I come down and I say, hey, it doesn't actually have a text property here. Well, then I start to think maybe I was wrong about that. Maybe if I come down just a bit lower, I'll see that uh, value is the property that I'm actually looking for. So being able to come into your scope and being able to inspect all the different elements and, and variables and things that you've got going on in your project, super, super useful. And again, way more practical than doing just a, a console log statement because you can actually pause, you can take time, you can look at the elements, you can look at the variables, you can look at all those things and not have to do 20 different console log statements to get all the information that you're looking for. So to make things even a little bit easier, here you had to go through and kind of look at, uh, look for uh, your different things. You can also, and I've done this here, let's see, right here, how do I delete this? So yeah, delete and delete. So you can open up your watch section, you can tell it, I wanna look for username input, and anytime you have it, just tell me what it is. So regardless of where I am in the application, it'll tell me what the value of username input is, which is actually pretty handy because I could say, hey, just watch this and I could do different breakpoints. Every time I pause, it'll tell me exactly what the value of that is. So uh, for instance, there's, there's uh, an array at the top called messages that keeps the, the messages, right? It's, it's an array of message objects that keeps the messages as we send and receive messages. So I could keep this here and anytime I wanna look at what's in that array, I could just come to this watch, see what's in that array and see if, if things look good or not. So that's our scope and our watch tab in the bottom right. Then in the left, this, is, this gets back to some of the debugging specifics. And uh, one of the most important things here is your breakpoints. So debugger is not necessarily considered a breakpoint exactly, but uh, it, it basically acts like a breakpoint. So I can actually set a breakpoint, and this is pretty common in whatever editor you're using, is you can click basically right to the left, to the left of your line number and set a breakpoint. And now, so if we look at debugger here, this is where we're, where we're currently paused. And if I do a continue, it will then hit this next breakpoint and pause there. So that's what an actual breakpoint looks like is when you come into this gutter over here, this little space next to the lines and do a breakpoint by clicking here to create one. So you can see if I, as I create more of these, you can see them all listed in my breakpoints tab. And I don't necessarily want all those right now, so I'm gonna get rid of them. But it's just to show you that it's there. Uh, one of the additional things that's super, super useful is your call stack. So as you have one function calls another function calls another function, you can see how, how all those different functions are called. And if we do, let's come up to, uh, let's, let's actually redo this whole thing. So let's restart, let's type in James, let's trigger the debugger. So now it's paused here. And I'm gonna add another, well actually, let's see, it's gonna call the send message function. And if I put a breakpoint in here and press continue, inside of send message, you can see the call stack, you're inside of send message here and login button event handler was the one who called it. So as you call more and more messages, you'll see that this starts keeping track of all the different functions that you've called. So you can kind of go through your code and know where you've been and what's going on. Then they've got other kinds of breakpoints down here. You've got an XHR and fetch breakpoint. So as you do uh, fetch commands or HTTP requests, you can see, you can, you can basically pause on any of those or you can pause on a certain U URL request. So if the URL contains a certain string, you, it'll go ahead and pause just the same way we use the debugger or the actual breakpoint uh, in the GUI here. Uh, and there's, then there's some other event listeners. I think for the purposes of this video, 
we're just going to stick with uh, talking about just the breakpoints and the de debugger that we've looked at so far, but know that there's other things you can look into to do a little bit more in the future. So we've gone ahead and refreshed our application here. And let's say I want to comment out this debugger statement. I can actually comment this out in the code. I can save it. Now this is not going to save the code that I've got over here, right? My code. This is the code that the browser is running itself. So the browser has its own copy of this code that it uses to, to render everything and to do the JavaScript. And now that I've got it commented out and I've saved its version, I can type in James and I can do chat and notice that we're not going to hit that, that debugger. It's not going to trigger a breakpoint in Chrome developer tools. So this is something pretty interesting that you can go in and you can just kind of edit your code on the fly. But the way that I've just done this, this does not per persist to the code that I've got over in, in Visual Studio Code, which can be kind of confusing. So one thing that you can do if you're interested in kind of tying those two a little bit closer together is you can tell it what uh, what folder you're working with. What If you're working on local stuff, you can tell it which ones you're working on. So if I tell it where my files are, and I had to go through another step of, of saying that I had permission to do this, and I tell it where my files are, I can actually load those files in the browser here. And if I scroll down in the app.js, let me make this a little bit bigger, scroll down in the code to my login function and comment this out. So I haven't saved it yet, but notice over here it's it's uncommented, over here it's commented, and then I save it, it's going to actually update what's in Visual Studio Code over here. So if you connect your folder workspace to your debug session or your sources tab inside of Google Chrome, you can actually edit your code right here in Google Chrome. Now this is kind of cool, but I think something that's even cooler is to have Visual Studio Code go ahead and, and, and allow you to do the debugging for you. So what we're gonna do, uh, let's go ahead and, and move this back over a little bit. Let's come over to Visual Studio Code. Let's make this a little bigger for the time being. And to do what we're about to do, to, to really get into debugging in VS Code, you're gonna need to install the, uh, what is it, Chrome Debugger for Chrome. So this is a simple extension with ton 8,500,000 downloads that you can go ahead and install. Install that in VS Code. And then you can come down to the Debug tab here so you open up that debug tab and you'll see something that looks similar to what we just saw in Chrome, right? We've got our variables that we can look at. We've got a watch section. We've got a call stack and breakpoints. These are all things we saw in Chrome just a few minutes ago. But now if we look at, uh, it says no configurations and let's say we want to debug this with Chrome. Let's add a configuration and they've got a couple of different presets. So if you're doing uh, client side JavaScript, you can select Chrome as your environment. And let's say we want to do a Chrome launch and let's get rid of the secondary configuration. Looks like it created two for us. So we've got a configuration here to launch Chrome in a debug mode. All right, so we will, uh, let's say this is gonna be localhost 3000 and save this. If we go ahead and do a launch here, so see our, our configuration has popped up, launch Chrome, and this comes from the name. So if I change this, uh, launch or debug, let's say debug in Chrome, save that it's going to update what gets displayed in this drop down so we've got our configuration mostly done and we just need to do one thing so right now it's saying the web root is at our workspace folder so this is the folder that we're in the folder that this launch json file folder is in is this parent folder and we actually want to look in our public folder which is where our html css and javascript are so we can type in here the end uh, public and we can come into our app or actually we can come back to our debug here and let's go ahead and run this. And this should open up a tab in Google Chrome in kind of a debug mode here in a second. We'll see it pop up. And so now we've got the application open. And now instead of, let's slide this uh, these debug tools over a little bit. Instead of triggering a pause by the debugger statement, we can go ahead and create a breakpoint in VS Code by clicking in the gutter next to the lines here so just the same way that we looked at in the chrome developer tools and if i go ahead and run this and say james and try to log in notice it's going to open back up visual studio code we are paused on this breakpoint which you can see here you can look at your local variables you can look at your script variables you can look at your global you can do a watch here and say i want to watch for username input and messages and you can see the call stack, you can see your breakpoints, all the things that we saw in Google Chrome, you can see right inside of VS Code and do all of your debugging in here 
which to me personally, I think is amazing. I think this stuff over here looks a little bit better than what Chrome gives you. I think staying inside of Visual, Co Visual Studio Code is just awesome as a whole. I love the functionality that it gives you. And I think this way you get to kind of stay closer to your code. So as you walk through, not only, you know, if you looked in Chrome, let's we can go ahead and play this. So let's go back to our, our other tab that we were using. Well, it looks like I closed it. But if we if I were to open up the the source tab here again to kind of look at the view that we had before, and I looked at one of these files, it's still just it's not it's not the same, right? I could make changes in here and I could save them and it could have that effect, but it's not the same as being right inside of the the editor that you use to write all of your code in the first place. So again, all in all, I just I think debugging Visual Studio Code is it's a little bit easier. It's nice to stay in this really fantastic editor. Uh, the stuff in Chrome is great for what it gives you, but it's just not quite as you know appealing and put together and consistent as what you get with staying inside of VS Code. Because again, you get access to all the things that you looked at, or most of the things. There might be some stuff that I'm not thinking about, and there almost certainly is. But there's uh, your variables, your watches, your call stack, your breakpoints, and there's other things that you can look at as well. Uh, you can continue the execution of your app. You can do what's called a step over, a step into, and a step out. So if you're inside of a function, you wanna finish that function, you can step out of it. You can step into a function call. You can step over the next line, or you can go ahead and continue. Uh, and then you've got a restart button here if you wanna just restart your debug session, or if you wanna close it, you can do that as well. Uh, and then you can also see, uh, you've got your debug console here at the bottom. So this is gonna have the same output that your console would have in the Chrome developer tool. So this uh, console log here with username input dot value, we'll go ahead and print uh, James here as well. So one thing that I think uh, is worth noting as well, you can do conditional breakpoints. So I wanna, let's say I wanna uh, edit this breakpoint and I only want to break on this if username input dot value equals, and let's say I wanna see it equals uh, James. So if it equals James, then I wanna go ahead and trigger this conditional breakpoint. And once I do that, let's, uh, let's save this. Let's refresh our debugging. And it looks like we're up and running here. So if I type in something random that's not James, we shouldn't hit that breakpoint. But if I refresh here and type in James this time, now we've got this, uh, this breakpoint hitting. So if I, if I didn't input something, and I wanna see this username input value equals undefined if I wanted to check for undefined which is pretty common that would make sense something to to check for go ahead and save that and let's refresh our debug configuration here as well it looks like we're good so if I didn't hit anything if I didn't type in anything I think this will go ahead actually let's refresh this page just to make sure D don't type anything and press chat All right, so it looks like instead of undefined, we're actually looking for an empty string here. So let's check that. So if they don't add an input, let's save one more time. Let's refresh debugging and we'll refresh our page. So if we don't put anything and press chat, we should hit that breakpoint. Okay, so now we know they've hit that breakpoint. We could go through and make sure we're handling it correctly. Let's go ahead and continue this. And then let's try one more time as James and it should let us go through. And we still got this bug here that we never fixed. So instead of looking for the text, we're actually looking for the value. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is, like I said, this is kind of the next level. If, you, if you're kind of a beginner to intermediate web developer or a developer in general, general debugging and really understanding how to debug and what the, what the tools are that are available and how to use them, it's just, it's gonna make you infinitely a better developer. It's really kind of a next level kind of stage for you as I hope you're developing. I hope you see this and you see the value in it. Uh, this is, it's gonna go miles beyond just your console log statements. And again, they have their place. I use them a ton. I probably use them more than I should. And I part of the reason for me recording this video is to make sure that I'm reinforcing uh, all this debugging stuff that I talk about so to make sure that I use it as well instead of just kind of defaulting to console statements. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. I, I can't stress enough. This is going to be something that you're definitely going to use. You're definitely going to appreciate the more you get used to it and the more bugs you come across and the more tricky things you come across. This is going to save your butt at times. So uh, again, I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys liked what you saw, uh, like, subscribe, comment on the video. Let me know what you thought. Find me on Twitter at James Q Quick. Let me know how you're doing, what you're working on, things you want to see, all that good stuff. I really appreciate you being here, and I will see you guys in the next video.